And now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I present to you John O'Shea. Thank you for the introduction, and thank you for having me, having me back. This honor means more to me than I can even say. I love this place. It's not the buildings or the history, it's the people. This occasion is all the more special for me, because I'm speaking to you, not as a stranger, but as a teammate, a teacher, a friend. Four years ago, I sat where you're sitting now. I had the same mix of nerves and excitement, the same eagerness to go, but yet the same sadness of leaving. When you were freshman and sophomores, I was finishing my master's degree. I played alongside you. I taught you. I learned from you. And though I ran away, I followed you. I've watched you grow. You're ready for what's next. But before you go, we'll have to sit through one more lecture. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the topic is mathematics. Curtis will like that. My favorite result in math is called the Riemann Rearrangement Theorem. It states that if an infinite series is only conditionally convergent, then rearranging the terms the resulting series can converge to any given real number. I wish I could show you a proof but unfortunately, there's never a blackboard in my need one. <laughs> but that's okay. We can make do. Consider a classic example, the alternating harmonic series. One minus a half plus a third minus a fourth plus a fifth minus a sixth and infinitely on. If you add all those numbers up, eventually, you will converge to the natural log of two. Well, it turns out that without changing a single number, if you simply rearrange those terms, you can get closer and closer, not to the natural log of two, but to half the natural log of two. In fact, you can converge to any real number you choose. There are no tricks, only simple and elegant mathematics. I learned that theorem here at Penn State. It showed me something important, something that I've taken with me. The world is so much more elegant and full of possibility than people usually dream. People sometimes ask me how I managed to play football and do mathematical research at the level. I find that usually they aren't asking how I manage my time. Rather, there's a sense of disbelief in their voice. There's disbelief because they think a football player can't be a mathematician. Either a person sums to one thing, or he sums to something else. We usually do think of people in terms of sums, don't we? We might like to think that we don't. We might like to think that we appreciate <coughs> complexity and possibility. But in practice, I think sometimes we tend to look at people's resumes and just reduce them to a job or a label. Sometimes, I think we even do that with ourselves. We let ourselves think that our lives follow a single course. We let ourselves be restricted, limited, compared. Sometimes it can start to feel like our life has these bounds. Success starts to become about promotions, or making more money, or Super Bowl rings. And don't get me wrong, I want to win a Super Bowl. <laughs> and I'm willing to do any and everything I can on the field to get it. I'm driven to win, and I hate losing. But at the end of the day, winning, or getting that promotion, or making more money, it will only take you so far. It might change how other people look at you, but in my opinion, it won't really change the way you look at yourself. It won't give you a sense of greater possibility for yourself. It won't help you grow. I play football and I do math because I want to, because I can, 
and I don't let anyone tell me that I can't. It's not the fame or the greatness or the higher degrees that motivate me. I'm not chasing some external achievement. It's the process that matters to me. This extraordinary process of making and remaking in terms of my life. I love playing. I love testing. I love learning. It's the work that I love. I want you to imagine for a second what it must have been like to be remade. Imagine the thrill he must have felt as he figured out that what mathematicians assumed for so long just wasn't quite right. Imagine the sense of wonder that just grew and grew inside him as he followed his hunch. And he came up with this fascinating, beautiful, mind-bending result. Not everyone can make scientific breakthroughs, just like not everyone can be a football player. But every, every single one of them can experiment and play and learn and grow. We took a lot of tests in college. We had to memorize formulas, complete problem sets. But that wasn't what your education is really about. It wasn't about remembering coaching structures or factoring polynomials. Really, it was about learning how to think. You were told the world is complex and fascinating. But it was up to you to discover it. You had to ask why things worked. You had to learn to scrutinize assumptions, test your hypothesis, gather evidence, and come to conclusions. You sought greater understanding while knowing Every answer only brought one question. We had to become explorers. To be a scientist, you need to have a certain kind of openness, a willingness to look where other people aren't, to just see what other people can't. It takes imagination. It takes curiosity and insight and drive to take a hunch and follow that path and see where it leads. And then, when you're done, to do it all over again. Success is evanescent. You have to start over every single day. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes you fail. You need resiliency and determination and to receive criticism and learn from it, to suffer setbacks and keep going. Sometimes, when you're working on a tough problem, you fail 99 times in a row. And then you fail the 100th time, too. I'm not going to lie. It can be really frustrating. But that's okay. Life is like that. So what do you do? You reshuffle your terms. You head in, the, in another direction. You learn from your mistakes. It's part of the process. And it's that process that is one of the greatest renewing forces in your life. But don't mistake me. It's good to acknowledge your success, especially today. And gradually, you've accomplished something great. Celebrate. I'm proud of what you've done. I couldn't be prouder. And I can't wait to see what you do. Your degree is finished, but your education is only beginning. May it never stop. <laughs>